which there will be no roles. Because they are easy, visible differences have been chosen. Because they are easy, visible differences have inferior groups and into the cheap labor on which this system still depends. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen. This is the Rossum Electromusic Panharmonium Mutating Spectral Resynthesizer. What it does is takes an input sound, analyzes its spectra or frequency content or harmonics, breaks it down into the 33 strongest or most dominant bands, then passes it along to a bank of 33 oscillators to recreate that sound. Along the way, you get to change things like the waveform, how many oscillators are being used, how the pitch is being offset, how things are being blurred, etc. That's where the mutating part comes in. I had the good fortune of being involved in part of the development process for the Panharmonium, and my focus was actually on rhythmic applications for it, not what you would normally expect. So in this movie, I'm going to give you a quick run-through of how the Panharmonium works so you can find your way around it, and then in the next movie, I'll demonstrate some of those rhythmic applications. Panharmonium does have stereo inputs and outputs, but its actual processing section is monophonic. You can either have its output mixed equally into the left and right outputs, or you can divide it so that a mixture of left and right is on one output and just the effects or the wet side is on the other output. I have it set up to blend its output in with a normal input. That way I can go between the dry signal, the input, and the processed output. As you can hear in that sound, it's actually pretty accurate. If you want a good starting configuration with Panharmonium, they have saved that as the first preset. It's almost identical to the settings I personally use. What I do is I set the analyzer controls full counterclockwise. That gives me the maximum input time resolution. I set the oscillator full counterclockwise. That gives me the maximum frequency resolution on output. I turn blur and feedback full counterclockwise. Ignore the CV attenuators. Put the center frequency just past 12 o'clock. Put the bandwidth at 12 o'clock. Center frequency warp and the octaves at 12 as well. I choose this cross-fading sine wave as the oscillator's initial waveform. I find that to be the most accurate or realistic, and then I go off from there. And finally, I said glide full counterclockwise. Again, mix is my dry, wet mixture. I'm going to be playing around with two different sound sources. One is this blowpipe from the Cycling 74 Incidental Gesture Library. And another is Labor on which this, system still this famous speech by Gloria Steinman. We're talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen or those earned. The analyzer section decides how often it's sampling the frequency content of the input. The fastest is every 17 milliseconds, but you can slow down from there, either by using this control. No roles other than those chosen or those earned. We are really talking about humanism. And further modify that with this multiplier, which slows it down even more. So you get to something that's really quite spacey by slowing down the input analysis section. And into the cheap labor on which this is full counterclockwise is maximum res. On output, the voices decide how many oscillators are being used. 33 is the maximum. As you turn it down, you get less resolution in the frequency content and break it down into fewer partials or harmonics, for example. Sex and race, because they are easy, visible differences, have been the primary ways of organizing human beings into superior and inferior groups. It's amazing how low you can go. I mean, here are around four to five oscillators, and it's still somewhat intelligible. We are talking about a society in which there will be no... All the way down to one oscillator. Blur and glide controls how it transitions from one input slice to the next. Blur is sort of a temporal smoothing or crossfade. And with no blur, it's changing as fast as the analyzer allows. What Glide does is let you actually hear the process of reassigning different harmonics to the oscillators by sliding the frequency between them. 
For example, if I reduce my number of oscillators, then turn up the glide, you can hear how the input partials are being reapportioned to different oscillators as we bend in between them. Sex and race, because they are easy, visible differences, have been the primary way to equivalent to human beings to equivalent to two social groups. And into the two labor on which this system is so depends. Now, it's really pronounced for something like speech, where there's a lot of different harmonics changing around. But if I go back to this very sustained blowpipe that's on the same note, you notice you'll stay inside a similar frequency band. Same with blur. Now you have a very mellow, almost generative sound. And that's maximum resolution again. The center frequency and bandwidth decides what part of the spectrum you're going to analyze. You can optimize this for more clarity or use it as a special effect to focus on certain frequencies. For example, this blowpipe has quite an emphasized mid-range. I find that I can improve its clarity by actually damping some of that mid-range out. Well, when bandwidth is at center, that's the maximum spread. As I go to the left, it's a bandpass filter. As I go to the right, it's a notch filter back to my white output and pick the bandpass side. And now it sounds almost like a bandpass filter in operation, except it's being resynthesized. And I can choose which frequencies to focus on. Now if I go down to an area where there's very few harmonics present, it's only going to use a few oscillators and you'll get that low resolution sound. I'll go up to higher frequency here. Focus on the breathiness. Let's go over to Notch, where we will remove middle frequencies and keep just low and high ones. That's a nice sound there. Now let's get into some of the mutating part. Because you can use frequency and octave to offset the pitch of the sound. For example, I go up and down a fifth. And into the cheap labor on which this system still depends. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen. Or those earned. We are really talking about humanism. This is no simple reform. It really is a revolution. And then whole octaves. Section. And we'll go to our tonal material. Make it very dirge like by transposing it down. Go to the very high frequencies. So it's a way of retuning some of your content. Now these pitch offsets get really fun when you start playing with feedback. Feedback takes some of the resynthesized output and feeds it back into the input for analysis. This effect is particularly easy to hear on the voice. Let's go ahead and go back to that speech. Because they are easy, visible differences. Pitch it down a little. Primary ways of organizing human beings into superior And then bring up the feedback. Inferior groups. And into the cheap labor on which this system still depends. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than those chosen or those earned. We've got a loop going on now of the output, which has been transposed down, coming back to the input, which transposes down further, which goes back to the input, which transposes down further. You get what's called that barber pole effect of constantly going up or down. Easy visible differences have been the primary ways of organizing human beings into superior and inferior groups. And into the cheap labor on which this system is still depends. Of course, reducing the number of oscillators makes that even more exaggerated. And the blur effect can help smooth that out or slow it down.
And of course that works on our tonal blowpipe as well. Well, it's not quite as obvious because this is already a very noisy mass of harmonics. You do get some interesting drones here though. Original input. Mutated output. And let's turn that off for now. Go back to where we were. And let's talk a little bit more about transposition. The default is to change the pitch of a sound and take all the harmonics up and down with it, keeping their relationship. That way the sound is pretty constant. However, there's an alternate mode called spectral warping that just treats the harmonics and shifts those more as a frequency shifter application instead of normal pitch shifting. To get there, you hold output mode and you twist frequency until you see this LED come on. That means we're now in warped mode. Now this control shifts harmonics as a group and creates something much more ethereal and less tonal. Let's go ahead and switch back to the speech. See, it's lost its intelligibility, and now it's just a mess of harmonics. Particularly when we blur things. Let's go down. Maybe an octave. To take it out of this mode, again, hold the output with the Option button, and change frequency back up to 12 o'clock until the LED goes off, and now you're back to normal pitch shifting. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles other than... The Finally, there's waveform. Sine wave is your typical waveform that you would use to reset the size of sound. If I go down to just pure signs, you'll hear it actually quantized based on these slices. And inferior groups. Particularly if I slow this down. We are talking about a society in which there will be no roles... Crossfading signs smooths that out. ...or those earned. We are really talking about humanism. This is no simple... The triangle wave has a few more upper harmonics. It really is a revolution. Here's a little brighter now. Sex and race, because they are easy, visible differences, have been the primary... Sawtooth obvious is much brighter. ...beings into superior and inferior groups, and into the cheap labor... On this might work better with our blowpipe. That's a bunch of sawtooth oscillators, which you can filter, by the way. It does have a cross-fading sawtooth. To make it much smoother. And again, all these controls are still active. You can go ahead and choose to reduce the number of oscillators. Or to go to square wave or pulse waves, which are even brighter. are particularly interesting when you're resynthesizing new sounds based on your input. For example, if you had a flute sound coming in, and you wanted to make it much brighter, something that you can go ahead and feed through a filter, you try these alternate waveforms. Now, as I mentioned, the analyzer section can slow down how often the slices are measured on the input, and you start getting into very chopped up sounds. I'll go to just sine wave changing every slice. Increase the multiplier, slow down further. And now we're starting to cross over into more rhythmic territory. And this was what I focused on when I was working with the panharmonium. So let's explore some of those rhythmic possibilities in the next movie.